Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us again. We are looking at the attributes of God, and today we're going to look at God's holiness. I remember a time when I was about seven, we moved house, and in our house we didn't have any carpet. And when we did get carpet, my nan, who used to live with us, used to make us use the back door as our front door so that we could take our shoes off before we went on the new carpet. It reminded me when we were when I was looking into God's holiness where Moses goes up to the mountain and God says to him, Moses, take your sandals off for where you are standing. It's holy ground. It wasn't that the ground was holy. It was that Moses was in the presence of God. And it was God who made the ground holy with his presence. In Genesis chapter 2 and, and verse 3, it talks about God setting apart the uh, seventh day as a Sabbath, holy to him. And that's the basic idea of holiness, is that it's to be set apart for God, separate for God. And in the Old Testament places, things, people and seasons were called holy when they were set apart for God. You know, in the book of Leviticus, which uh, Moses wrote, he talks to the uh, priests for, for the uh, Levites about um how they should set certain things apart and how God instructs Moses to tell them to set things apart for I am a holy God. And that's what Moses had to tell the Levitical priests. Then further on uh, from there, when um, Moses was sending God's message, he's talking to the priests about uh, that they have to then instruct the people of Israel telling them what they need to do in order to be holy. We move further on into the book of Isaiah, the prophet, and Isaiah um, is in uh, the presence of God, but can't look upon God and sees um, above him the seraphim, which it each had six wings, it tells us, and with two they covered their face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another, and this is what they said, this is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Friends, when something happens in the Bible which repeated three times, it means we need to take notice and we need to look at it carefully. And here God is telling us, he's holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Verse 4 goes on to say, The foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, this is Isaiah, woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. Isaiah didn't think he would deserve to be in God's presence. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah knew he was unclean. You know, just like our carpet. It was never going to stay clean. Friends up. If we're not in the presence of God, if we are not a Christian, we are never going to be clean. We can never clean ourselves enough. We can never set apart things like Moses told the priests to be holy. We just celebrated Easter two weeks ago. And the point of Easter is that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins and of my sins. And was raised again three days later to defeat sin and to defeat death. To make us clean. To atone once and for all for our sin. In the book of Isaiah it goes on to say, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Friends, our sin and our guilt was taken away in atonement for on the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, when you look at the verses that I'll be able to give you a little bit later on, you'll see how God used his son, separated his son for us. And because of this, the people of God have always been expected to reflect the holiness which they see in God. 
God wants his people to share in his holiness. In the New Testament, the common word for Christians is saints. It meant the holy ones, those who are set apart and dedicated to God's service. And saints are meant to grow in holiness and in likeness to God. Friends, let me sum it up with Hebrews 7, verses 26 to 28. And it says this, For in, it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weaknesses as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Friends, you can know God. You can tell others in your family, maybe if they don't know God, that you know God, and you can come into God's presence daily and talk to him daily. Have a wonderful day. Dwell with God and his holiness. Keep praying for one another. And please send any uh, needs or prayer requests to uh, admin, admin at bridgechapel.com. God bless you.